Welcome to The Faithful Steward. This is a podcast all about sharing biblical wisdom and practical insights in order to help church leaders pursue and teach financial freedom as part of Christian discipleship. We believe this is a spiritual conversation and this is a place where the church needs to lead the way in order to move our communities forward in how we steward God's resources. I'm your host, James Lenhoff, and I am so passionate about this conversation and helping leaders have the confidence to step into it. We believe that if we help people thrive financially and grow spiritually, it changes everything. And I am so excited to join you on this journey. This podcast is brought to you by GoodSense. If you'd like more information about what we're up to, you can go to our website at goodsensemovement.org. All right, let's get started with today's conversation. Well, I am so excited to join you today in our first episode of The Faithful Steward. This is something I have been really passionate about for a really long time. And so as a starting point, it might make sense for me to introduce myself and explain why I'm here and why I'm so excited to jump into this conversation with you. Uh, Again, my name is James Lenhoff. I have spent 23 years in the financial services industry. I was a certified financial planner, uh, helped lead a, a wealth management firm doing financial planning for thousands of clients. It has been a long, long career for me. And in that entire time, as I stepped out of it recently and stepped more fully into ministry as a pastor at my church, I realized somewhere along that journey that this is a conversation that everyone is getting lost in. This whole topic of money and how to manage it and how to think about it is so confusing for everyone as they walk through life. And I believe the church needs to step in to that leadership position of having this conversation, as scary as it is, as complicated as it seems to be. But the truth is your people are lost in this sea of confusion, and maybe you are too, where on one hand you have the 24-hour-a-day news cycle, or as I like to call it, the downfall of humanity, And it is telling everyone that money is really complicated. It's super confusing. It's so difficult to navigate. And you need guys like me to help you navigate it. You need planners and advisors and all the professionals because you're never going to be able to understand it. It's just too hard. And there's this constant attention that's being paid to money because it's on the news 24 hours a day, seven days a week. On the other side of the equation, You have the financial gurus that are telling your people that money is easy. It's so simple. If you just follow all of my rules, if you always do what I say and never do anything wrong, then you'll be fine. And the only reason you have a money problem is because you're stupid. And that's not true. Money is hard, but it's not hard because the math is complicated. It's hard because it's emotional. It's relational. It's deeply spiritual. This is a place where the church needs to step in and add clarity and understanding and frameworks to help the members of your community thrive in this really confusing topic. And so we are really passionate about teaching you as church leaders how to teach others to pursue faithful stewardship. And we think stewardship is a much bigger topic than just money, but money is where we typically start. And so we want to set the groundwork as we start this podcast out. This first month, we're really going to be helping to clarify what is a faithful steward? What do we mean when we talk about faithful stewardship? And how do we break it down into digestible and understandable bites so that our people can continue to grow in their spiritual discipleship. We want them to follow Jesus. We want them to grow in their discipleship, and they need to be faithful stewards in order to truly gain the freedom and the beauty that comes with recognizing, I'm not the owner, I'm just the steward of these resources. When we think about stewardship, a lot of times we start with money. But what we need to recognize, it's got to be a bigger conversation than that. 
Stewardship is about everything that we have, every resource that we've been given. And so it goes beyond just the dollars in the bank account or the money that we're saving for retirement. It's much bigger than that. Stewardship is a recognition that God is the creator of all and is therefore the owner of all. That means he doesn't just own the 10% that I'm trying to give him as a tithe. He owns 100% of the resources that I have been charged to manage. Those resources are things like my time, my skills. There's not a, a breath in your lungs that God didn't give you. Your time is his. There's not a skill that you're using to advance in your career, to grow in your uh, accomplishments. There's nothing you are accomplishing that he didn't give you the talent and the skill and the passion for in the first place. There's not a penny in your pocket that isn't somehow tied to the fact that you had the time to go earn that penny and you had the skill to go earn that penny. These things are all related to the fact that God has given us what we need in order to co-create with him. And so the resources that we have, all those resources beyond just money, are his. We believe that God owns everything. And when we talk about stewardship, a lot of times we'll turn to the parable of the talents, which is a wonderful parable that Jesus tells where he talks about this master that gives resources that are the master's resources to these servants and then goes away. And when he comes back, I'm sure you know the story, there were two of those servants who multiplied what he had given them to manage, and there was one servant who buried it in the ground. The one who buried it, it did not go well for him. And I find that we end up in situations a lot of times where because we don't talk about this topic, we have a lot of people who have buried God's resources or have used it entirely for their own benefit, their own pleasure, their own enjoyment. We need to start leading the conversation and start helping people recognize what that parable is telling us. What Jesus is sharing with us in that story is that there are two really important things to highlight. One is that when the master came back, the expectation was multiplication. When the master returned, the expectation was that you did something for my kingdom with my kingdom's resources. You created more than what I gave you to manage initially. That is not just about growing your retirement account or having your investments go up in value. It is about the fact that these resources are to be multiplied. And the way we multiply them is by stewarding them well, making wise decisions with them, but also recognizing the second point which is that in the end, the master still owned all of it. The stewards didn't say, hey, welcome back, master. You know, here's 10% uh, of what you gave me. Thanks for all the extra. The stewards didn't say, hey, you know, I doubled it. So I'll give you half. I'll take the other half. We'll call it even. All of the resources were the master's resources. Always. No matter how big they got, no matter how much work the stewards did to expand and multiply those resources, 100% of those resources still belong to the master. And we need to help our people understand that that is actually beautiful. There is a delight in not actually owning any of these resources. There is a beauty and a freedom that comes from thinking of yourself as a steward rather than an owner. We live in a society, and look, I spent 23 years helping people make more money, helping them grow their retirement assets and their investment accounts, and they're rooted in this idea of ownership. I own it. I did it. I built it. I made it. So I get to keep it. I deserve it. But when we recognize and we tell ourselves that story in a way that understands that there is so much about how we got here that we had no control over. There are so many things about my life that led to this point, and I would say 99% of the things that actually mattered the most, I had absolutely no control over, and that's probably understating it. When we think about the most important factors, the family we were born into, the skill set that we were able to develop because we had access to certain things, 
that other people may not have had access to. The time that we were born, right? We could have been born during the plague. I could have been born to a single mom in the depths of poverty. I could have been born uh, in Haiti and had a totally different outcome. And so when we tell ourselves the story that starts with the recognition that none of this actually truly was ours, it was all given to us, we can tell that story in a way that realizes how fortunate we are and helps us to connect to the fact that if none of it really at the core, the most important aspects had anything to do with me, then why would I claim it as mine? It's not mine. But all the messaging that your people are surrounded by and that you are surrounded by is screaming, you deserve it, you did it, it's yours, you get to keep it. There is this hoarding mentality, this sense of gather and, and scrap and fight for as much as you can to protect yourself because there's not enough to go around. We got to make sure that we have enough. And so we're constantly saying, no, that's mine. You can't have it. That's mine. You can't have it. And we're claiming ownership on things that we were given, on things that really will always be the masters. When we think about stewardship this way, it changes our mindset. It changes our language. We stop thinking of my house. We stop thinking of my money, my bank account, my time, my career, my skill set. And we start to recognize if it's all his, he gave it to us for a reason. And now the question of the faithful steward is, why did you ask me to manage this? Why did you give this to me to steward for you? What do you want me to do with your resources? What do you want me to do with your money, with your time, with your breath in my lungs, with your skills that you gave me, with the passions that you wired in me? What do you want me to do with these gifts that you've asked me to manage? It changes the, the paradigm of what the point is. Right. If the point is ownership, it's accumulate, get as much as you can, pile it up and protect yourself. But if the point is stewardship, then the goal is honor. It's kingdom service. It's looking at this with a different lens and saying, it's all yours. Now I can step into obedience. I want to seek out wisdom for how to really honor you with your stuff instead of I want to protect myself and gather as much as I can. Now, right out of the gate, I want to set a very clear line because I think when we use the term stewardship in the church community, we tend to be talking about giving. So stewardship pastors are really talking about, you know, how do we increase giving? How do we do this capital campaign? How do we pay for this building or this outreach that we want to do? And all those things are great. I'm not belittling it. I'm just saying, because we've used that term so commonly around generosity and giving and tithing, we have muddied the water. We have made stewardship be synonymous with charitable contributions. Stewardship is really just about writing checks to charities. And that is a huge mistake that I think the church needs to do the work to undo. We want to separate this concept of stewardship from generosity. Because a lot of times what we're doing is we're talking to people about stewardship when we need their generosity. We step into this conversation when we're trying to raise money for a, a project or an outreach or a building campaign. And that's when we talk about stewardship. We actually should be talking about stewardship on a regular basis. This should just be part of the process of following Jesus. Jesus talks about money a lot. And when he talks about money, it's not always just about generosity. It's about recognizing the ownership is not yours. And so we need to start having this conversation on Sundays, in my opinion. As a, as a pastor in, at my church, my target is let's have this be a conversation that comes up on the regular. This is not something we just save for building campaigns and big fundraisers and things we're trying to push for. It is part 
of Christian discipleship. It is part of spiritual discipline. And so it needs to be part of our common language. And so we need to separate this conversation from when we're trying to raise money. We also need to separate the conversation from only talking about it when people are in trouble, right? So when people come to us and they have credit card debt or they have issues that they're dealing with financially, we say, oh, you need to go to our stewardship ministry, which is mostly just about, you know, putting out fires and helping save people from themselves. That is not actually stewardship either. It's a component. We, we need to be wise. We need to understand how we're going to handle these resources and and how do we approach things like debt. And we're going to talk about that on this podcast for sure. But we need to start at a much higher level and a much broader base. The whole community needs to have a different understanding of the fact that they don't own anything. It's all God's, which is so counter to our current culture. And that's why I think the church needs to lead the way. We need a language that the entire church can speak because we tend to separate this conversation into multiple directions. We send people who are in crisis into this direction. We send people who are, you know, wanting to be more generous into a different conversation. They're learning different languages at different times for different reasons. We need to give the entire community at the same time an understanding of what biblical stewardship looks like, because we actually believe it changes everything if we do it. So we are going to equip you to have the confidence that this is your space. This is your job. We want you to pursue financial freedom and feel that beauty and that delight of being a faithful steward so that you can teach others. You can't lead others where you've never been before. And so this is about equipping you in your personal walk and your personal experience of stewardship so that you can equip others from the pulpit, from the stage, in these larger community settings. This is your wheelhouse, whether you know it or not. And our job on this podcast is to prepare you, equip you, encourage you, and instill you with the confidence you need to step into that position of leadership in this topic. We need to change the conversation. It starts in the church. This is our space and we need to do the work. So how do we do it differently? What do we need to do differently? We need to separate the conversation from giving. We need to have this be a conversation that is happening from the church stage, from the pulpit. This is something that needs to be an all play. Everybody's in at the same time, and we're learning this con these concepts together in a larger community so that we can talk about it more. It's, it's less taboo, and we can learn these frameworks that actually will help lead to the kingdom expanding and growing. We serve a God of incredible abundance. There's more than enough. If we were just mediocre stewards, I'm convinced a lot more would be being accomplished if we can call our communities to a higher level of understanding of stewardship i think it would change the world the great commission would be fulfilled we would be doing work that would be changing lives around the globe because we don't have a resource problem there's plenty of income plenty of money there's more than enough income flowing through the hands of Christian families every year. The kingdom of God has plenty of resources because the master owns all of it anyway. What we have is a stewardship problem. We have an obedience problem. We have a wisdom problem. We have a spiritual heart condition problem. And the church is where it starts to change. And so the way we're going to walk through this is we're going to explain the concepts that we use at the Good Sense Movement. We are all about breaking this down into bite-sized chunks. And so over the next several weeks, we're going to be talking about what we cover in order to help frame this up and build out a structure for people to behave as faithful stewards. And the way we think of that is a faithful steward is a diligent earner, a prudent spender, 
And a prudent spender is a generous giver, a wise saver, and a cautious debtor. Those are the steps. And that's what I'm going to be taking you through in the first several episodes of this podcast is what does it look like to teach people that it's okay to earn money, that they should be diligent earners, that there is an expectation that they multiply the kingdom. Uh, What does it look like to teach them to be a prudent spender? How do we build into them the wisdom to be prudent in their spending decisions rather than emotional and, and irrational and completely reactionary? Then we're going to talk about what does it look like to call people to be generous givers? First and foremost, that our job as faithful stewards is to be generous with resources that aren't ours anyway. Then we're going to talk about what it looks like to be a wise saver. That yes, you should be accumulating resources for the future. You should be building up storehouses that are still God's resources still ready to be obedient with all of his resources that have been saved up. So we're not finding our security in those resources. We're not finding our sense of identity in them. And then finally, and finally, we are going to talk about what it looks like to be a cautious debtor. So often the debt conversation comes first. It becomes the priority and the focus, and it really misplaces the discussion. Because the truth is, if we solve these other issues first, If people are being faithful stewards because they're earning diligently and they're spending prudently and they are giving generously and they are saving wisely, the debt thing is not a problem. Debt is not the problem. Debt is a symptom of the problem. Debt is the result of someone being unfaithful in their stewardship. Debt is the result of someone feeling entitled and feeling like they deserve something and they're going to buy it anyway, even though they don't have the money for it. Debt is a heart issue. It's a spiritual issue. It is a bigger issue than the debt. But we reverse those and we talk about the debt as if debt is the problem. That is the symptom of the problem. And that's what we're going to walk through. How do we actually change the way we think about all these things and present them to your community in a way where they can start to thrive financially as they grow spiritually. Uh, We want to partner with churches to help them move this conversation forward confidently and in a way that leads to deep and lasting impact on the families they serve. Well, thank you so much for listening to the Faithful Steward podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes for links and other information that we mentioned in today's episode. Also, be sure to check out our website at goodsensemovement.org to get all the resources we offer churches to help equip them in teaching financial stewardship to their community. If you have any questions or any topics you want to make sure we cover on our show, you can email me at jameslenhoff at goodsensemovement.org. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you all have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you.